Lovely pursued by an MGB GT. An interesting nerdy fact, that looks lo not long for this world. Ooh, we've got a Jaguar. Well, morning folks, welcome to the Old Classic Car Channel and it is a Sunday, another Sunday so that can only mean one thing, another breakfast meeting and today we are off to the Old Piggery Cafe at the Combermere Business Park for the first of the breakfast meetings for 2024 Last weekend we were over at Hopley House we took the V8 Pilot and it behaved pretty much impeccably about 98% there, I would have thought I've actually finally got around to doing an information sheet this time for the window those are always really useful for anyone walking around the show and it's always great to see them on other cars that we see at the events we go to. So we'll fire this up, get it outside, warm it through and then we'll get ready to head over to the old Piggery Cafe and see what cars turn up. It's usually a mix of classic cars and sports cars so there's really something for everyone at this particular meeting and I heartily recommend anyone going along to it who likes the old cars like we do. Mrs. OCC is not firing on all cylinders herself today, so we won't be taking the MX-5 as well, so it'll just be the pilot. Well, we're here now, all the goodies on the back seat, and as usual, we are the second car here. The meeting doesn't officially start for another half an hour, 40 minutes or so. Oops, bit of wind there. So, so far, just the VW camper and us in a plucky 1950 Ford. What else will turn up today? Who knows? It is a bit of a breezy one, so apologies for any noise on the microphone this morning. But as long as it stays dry for this time of year, beginning of February, we can't really complain too much. Arrival number three is the trusty MGB. A few cars starting to arrive now. A whole gaggle of them, in fact. Toyota Celica follows the red Supra. Anyone missing a wheel? Quite an old reflector attached to this tree. Many of the little reflective pieces have disappeared. But yeah, that's got a few years on it. Cast aluminium.
Is that a thunderbird? Look at this beautiful sunbeam tiger. A modified Ford pickup truck. Modern running gear hiding under what a late forties, early nineteen fifties Ford body. Beautiful early 911. Honda S2000. TVR Griffith follows Lotus Esprit. Lovely V8 burble from the back of Blackpool's finest. Next up, one of Triumph's finest, the three-litre V8 Triumph Stag. What a great-looking car they are! I think they are just these are really growing on me. These are fantastic burble. I think I've got a bit of a thing going on for V8 now, if I'm honest. Watch this coming into view, but wow, a Jensen Interceptor, no less. Hotly pursued by an MGB GT, another V8, fantastic. Very, very clean MGB GT. Rally prepared TR4. Is that is that VTEC powered mini? Honda VTEC R powered mini. It's only when the bonnet is lifted up, it's got a flip front on it. It's only when the bonnet is lifted up, you reveals the full conversion to this amazing little car. A 
of the very smart little Lotus Elise. There's always a good turnout of Lotuses here at the Old Piggery Cafe. Some more classic Porsche action. Lovely jubbly. Immaculate little Fiat Punto. This is the Punto Sporting, I think. Super clean car. Yeah, the Punto Sporting. Quite a rare sight now. And second example of the Honda S2000 we've seen today as well. Look at this, a Saab 96 V4 no less. Wowzers, that's a cool looking car. TVR Tasmin. There's a whole gaggle of cars pouring in now. MGTF, the updated version of the MGF, 911, quite a few of those here today. Lovely TVR Chimera. TVR Griffith. Well, just look at this MG. What engine's that got in it, I wonder? R8. Keep an eye open on the Cars and Caffeine at Combermere Facebook group for dates for future gatherings here close to the Cheshire Shropshire border. If you've got an old car, don't worry about a little bit of mud on the road. Get it down here for the next meeting. That's my recommendation because it's a really excellent beat. I think now is probably a good time to have a quick walk around and see what is parked up here now and have a closer look at some of the cars that are here today. We've already seen the VTEC Mini and the TVR Griffith. This fantastic Lotus Esprit Turbo SE of the 1980s. Very, very sleek looking car indeed. Let's carry on down here and have another look at this beautiful yellow stag. I think it's a Mark II stag. They had the alloy wheels and the stainless steel sill covers as standard if I remember correctly, but there weren't too many differences between these and, oh, it's a yellow MX-5, not ours. Back to yellow Triumph, PBR3R. That must be a fairly late example, actually, of the Triumph Stag. But these look great, whether it's got the roof on or indeed with the hardtop on. I think they look best of all, actually, when they've got the hardtop on. They really, really do suit it. The mighty Dodge, the Hemi. Power to Dodge. And there's that white MGP GT. I can hear something driving past. The Morgan just drove past. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've seen this one before on the K plate. And again, it's got the recessed grill, same as Dad's, which they didn't make these for very long at all because they weren't universally popular. This one has a Webasto type sunroof in it. So a bit of open top motoring there without the inconveniences of being an MGB Roadster. Next to the MGB GT, the mighty Jensen Interceptor. What an incredible looking car that is. Huge Chrysler V8 engine in the front. Of course, the, the ultimate evolution of this car was the, the Jensen FF, the Ferguson Formula, the four-wheel drive, which looked very similar at first glance to the Interceptor, but it had a slightly square front end a longer front end and you had two sets of the slats there set into the front wing but there weren't too many other visual clues and differences between the regular rear wheel drive Jensen Interceptor like we have here and the FF but either way 
fantastic cars. And of course, previous Jensen's had fiberglass bodywork, the CV8 and the 541 before that had mainly fiberglass coachwork. I know on the CV8 the doors were skinned in aluminium, but most of it was fiberglass. But the Jensen switched to steel body construction when the Interceptor came along. And as a result, these things can rot spectacularly badly. So if you buy them under these, you have to really, really tread carefully. But yeah, fantastic looking car. So let's carry on down here and see what else we can find. And there is a Porsche being assisted in. I might be wrong, but it's pulling in the bottom entrance here. So let's have a look, see what it is. They were coming in very, very slowly indeed. So I suspect there may be a tow rope in evidence here. Yes, there's a, a Porsche with a problem. here we have the Griffith and the Chimera that we saw pulling in before an interesting nerdy fact these mirrors you may have seen them before somewhere because these were standard fit on the Citroen CX the Citroen CX door mirrors live on on various TVRs and indeed the Jaguar XJ220 so if you think those look vaguely familiar and you've had a Citroen in the past that's why Citroen CX mirrors right let's carry on down here very bonny little Morgan in midnight blue. The MGTF, this was the, the updated version of the MGF, but minus the hydro gas suspension that the original MGF had. And here is that amazing bright, bright yellow MGB. I think it's an MGB. It's got the body kit on it, very similar to the MGC GTS race cars. But I've got a feeling, it sounded like a four cylinder, but I could be wrong. Certainly a very purposeful looking car and it, yeah that looks really great. You see lots of modified MGBs around and some work and some don't visually but that looks pretty special. I think my youthful assistant will approve of this one. He'll be around this I'm sure if he hasn't been already. A little bib spoiler built into the, the hatchback as well. Yeah. That's a fun looking car. The mighty mighty Mercedes pulls in. We've got a real variety of sports cars here today because this is the old classic car channel. So while I try and feature a bit of everything, I always prioritise the older cars that are here today. But this, oh well, there he is, talking to my youthful assistant there, he is doing a video for his car traction channel. I imagine he approves of this one. I think it is. It sounded like a four, but With a crazy mm, it's, it's a bit like the MGC, the, yeah, Sebring. the Sebring GTS is. Oh, look at the hump of the on this one. Yeah, that's quite a hump. Oh, so what's hiding under there? The the profile of that hump looks very like a GT6 bonnet, with a little, with a little crease in the middle. You can't really see it, but yes, yeah, as I predicted. Sort of yes or no list. So, what mm. do you think about this MG? I don't see why you couldn't daily drive that. Fair enough. It's got a Beautifully burbly Ford pickup there, the fleet side. All right, let's carry on along here. What have we got along here? A Mercedes, a C63, I think. The Porsche's various. There's that bonny little Fiat Punto, the Punto Sporting. 911 and a Porsche 944. We've seen a couple of those arrive today. We always get a good turnout of Porsches here and TVRs as well. Interesting Audi up here and alongside that a very smart little Mini on some super wide wheels. We approve of those. The Honda S2000 and that gorgeous green Porsche 911 that we saw coming in before. I'll try and not get in this gentleman's photograph right this is just a lovely lovely car left hand drive on the J plate it's about 70 71 that kind of age look at the gullwing doors on this Mercedes what a wild looking car that is reminiscent of course of the old 300 SL gullwings of the 1950s what a 
pretty bonkers looking car but this is the one we'll focus on a beautiful early 911 on the LA the Fuchs wheels I'm never sure how you pronounce that F-U-C-H-S try not to club my head on there yeah, Porsche 911T a 2.4 of course a rear engine flat six like all the 911s earlier before these there was the 912 with the four cylinder flat engine yeah. what a sharp looking car that is really really beautiful car and this is pretty wild Mercedes AMG SLS sort of car I couldn't see me ever owning even if I could run to one of these but it's the sort of car you want to have a ride in maybe the Jaguar arrives and here's that beautiful Saab 96 V4 with a few rally mods on it We've got the CBA lamps on the front the Sibi Oscars this has got the V4 the Ford Cologne engine under its bonnet which was the replacement for the old two-stroke unit that appeared in earlier Saabs of this shape We've got another MGTF just pulling in. This looks really cool. It's got some fancy bucket seats in it as well. A sporty steering wheel. Looks like a fly-off handbrake adapter. Probably can't quite see it through the window, but it's there, trust me. And then we've got mini light style wheels. I know Saab used to sell wheels just like this in their options catalogue, and they were Ronal. Now whether these are Ronal wheels, I'm not quite sure. Very wide stud pattern. That's quite distinctive on these particular cars. A little, little spoiler on the back as well, I'm guessing that's quite a rare option from the 1970s. But this came, it was bowling along down the road at a very respectable rate of knots, so that is a really, really cool car. So aerodynamic, which is of course a nod to Saab's aeronautical links. They built aircraft for many many years we've even got a proper Saab branded filler cap on there which is good to see we like the details got some pretty whizzy looking timing gear Brandt's timing gear on the dash there so clearly it does a bit of road rallying this one got a Toyota MR2 is that the Mark 3 MR2 I think and this beautiful little mini twin carburetors twin SUs it's a 66 North Wales registration that's CA Swift tune engine. Yep, the twin SUs there, not too much room to work on them, but just about enough. Yeah, what a stunning little mini this is, a recreation of an original Cooper S. It's a later shell, because you can tell that because it's got the uh, hidden door hinges, it hasn't got the Mark 1 or the Mark 2 door hinges, it's got a single gutter as well and the small back light. So, this is sort of a converted later shell made to look like an earlier car it's probably an old car that's been reshelled at some point in time I would guess but yeah it's a really really cleanly beautifully presented little car this one what a bobby dazzler that is all right let's carry on down here past the TVR the Lotus and there's that Ford we've seen this once or twice maybe at the crew heritage I think we've certainly seen it there and also at Capesthorne Hall classic car show I think so yeah, modern running gear, I think it's got a diesel engine in it, originally it would have had the old Ford V8. Another Griffith here, again with the Citroen CX door mirrors proudly on display. And alongside that, the Ashley Roofed, much modified Mark III Spitfire that we enjoy seeing at many, many of these breakfast classic and sports car meets that we get to. Let's carry on along here past the V8 Pilot, Dadgy talking MGs. So we'll let them get on with it. There's one of the modern issue Lotus Europas. You don't see too many of those around. Here's another MGTF. Let's go and have a look at that car that we saw pulling in before, which I think was a Thunderbird, one of the modern ish interpretations. Well, I say modern, 2004. So this is sort of one of the more modern interpretations of the classic T Bird, I think. 50th anniversary. I'm not sure I've ever seen one of these. Wasn't the Lady Penelope car 
in the more modern Thunderbirds film based on one of these. I've got a vague inkling that it may have been. There must be very, very few of these around in this country. What an unusual car that is. 20 years old now. It looks like new in here. No. <laughs> oh, that's the great thing about many of these breakfast meats that we get to. You see cars, some of them familiar, and some of them like this one, very, very unfamiliar. So it's always a treat when these things turn up. And like I say, if you've got something interesting at home, bring it out for the next one here at the Old Piggery Cafe. All right, let's carry on down here and here. Nev 2C in 1965. Much modified and beautiful sounding Sunbeam Tiger. What an amazing car that is. I think these, didn't they have a 260 cubic inch V8 engine in them? Similar to that in the very early AC Cobras, in fact. Before they went to the 289, later 427. But this is the Sunbeam Tiger. And just a beautiful looking car, nice mini light wheels. Factory hardtop, it's got a roll cage and a spare wheel is wedged in there behind the bucket seats. So this one definitely means business. No carpets in this one. Some lovely old holder timing gear. That's a nice fitting, nice to see proper old school timing gear in these old school road rally cars. You've got bonnet pins, quick release bonnet pins for the bonnet. Yeah, that's a, just a great car, debumpered, sounds fantastic. What more could you want? What more could you ask for than a cracking looking car like that? That is just beautiful, beautiful car. What a treat to see that here today. And here we've got a bright yellow MX-5, which is always good to see this one here. Like I say, Mrs. OCC, she's feeling a bit croaky today, otherwise she would have had hers down here. Next to that's the TVR Tasmin. One of the wedgy TVRs, quite an early wedge TVR. I think these do these predate the 350i's and such like. This one is on a Y plate. Fiberglass body, of course. And the wedgy, very wedgy styling, just like that Lotus Esprit we were looking at before. Yeah, some really nice cars here today. Trusty TR3A, this one is a regular, so many of these meets. And it's always really nice to see this one out. Debumper, a couple of really smart Lucas lamps on the front. Correct badging. And yeah, what a lovely looking car that is. Do like this era of Rolls Royce. I must admit, these look very handsome, fairly under well, I say understated, reasonably understated, and very, very smart indeed. Of course, there was the Bentley version as well, so you could have your pick depending on whether you wanted the B or the Flying Lady on the front, the Spirit of Ecstasy, as in the case here on this Rolls Royce. So, yeah, very, very smart indeed. This is the Alpha we saw coming before, Fiat Spider. The Bath version of the Fiat Spider, which I think these are based on the contemporary MX-5, if I remember correctly. Nice looking car. Lovely blue as well, same colour as our Honda Accord. And there's quite a good lineup of these Fiats here today. And there's that Toyota Supra on an F-plate. It's a really smart example. And a Celica, you don't see many unmodified ones of these around, you see quite a few rally replicas. But not so many standard road cars, that's good to see. This is a beauty, this TR4, immaculately turned out. A very similar preparation evident on this one, as with the Sunbeam Tiger, just parked over the way. That's a beautiful looking car as well, I love the colour. and the, It's got the Surrey roof on it as well, so you've got the best of both worlds, you've got a hard top for when the weather 
is a little bit on the chilly side. And when the sun comes out, you can pop this middle centre section out, which is steel, and you've got an open top car, but with the fixed rear window still in place, so it stops a lot of the buffeting that you get with quite a lot of fully open classic cars. So yeah, that's just really, really nice. Ooh, nice set of scales here as well. And we carry on along here. Here's the other Porsche 944 that I mentioned before. And there's the replica Sebastian Loeb Citroen. That's a pretty wild looking car, that is. Look at that. <laughs> what an amazing looking car, that is. The Citroen Saxo, another Supra with the roof panels removed on this car. <laughs> and on the end here, one of the modernish Alpines. That is a very nice looking car, beautiful colour, my favourite colour I think of any car. And these are just really, really nice. These are sort of a modern interpretation of the original Alpine A110s of the early 1970s. Right, quite a few modern sports cars in the centre row here, headed by this very sharp looking 911. This is the Carrera 4. At the time you could get the Carrera with a two-wheel drive, or this, the Carrera 4 with four-wheel drive. Really, really nice looking cars. Still air cooled, of course, at this point in time. They've gone to water cooled now for some reason. But this is one of the original air cooled cars. Very, very nice it is, too. If you go around the back there, I think there's a, there's a space on the end of this line. The Immaculate Rover 45. And look at this incredible Ford V8 pickup. Bit of a pat in the truck, this one. Maybe next time we'll bring the pickup. Particularly smoky looking disco. Oh, that looks lot, not long for this world. Ooh, we've got a Jaguar. Beauty. An XK150. Wowzers, look at that. What a beautiful looking car that is. It's like in a very, very dark maroon colour. Beautiful XK straight six burble there. What a fantastic looking and sounding car that is. What a beautiful car. Let me know in the comments which of the cars featured here today at the Old Piggery Cafe you'd be taking home. Maybe this would be up there. Occasionally we see an XK140 here, but I've never seen this beautiful wine coloured XK150 before. What do we have here? Oh, a Dodge! Wow, look at that, what a fantastic thing. Good to see another Dodge out in the wild. This is like a fleet side type pickup truck. We've got a few pickups here actually today. Maybe we should nip home and get ours. Well, I suspect we might run out of space fairly soon. McLaren. It's getting pretty busy here now. Groovy looking truck this is. <laughs> yeah, the old pickup would have fitted in perfectly today. Sometimes you don't get any other commercial vehicles at all, but there are actually quite a few old American pickups here today. So yeah, we must try and get ours down here next time. Lovely old metal trunk in the back as well. California plate in the window. And I do like those wheels.
Yeah. Uh, I've got the bonnet up now on the Jensen Interceptor. Well and it's a huge engine, is it what six point something or seven point two litres, something like that, but it almost looks lost in that engine bay. It's a cracking looking bit of kit that is. This is in fact the Jensen SP, so this was a slightly uprated version of the Jensen Interceptor. And there's an immaculate Rover 45 that pulled in just a few moments ago. Here's one just arrived, just saw it backing in a few moments ago. This incredible little Ashley. So this is basically the Ashley 1172. We saw the Ashley fastback roof on that Spitfire. Well, this is from the same company, Ashley Laminates Limited. This would originally have been designed with Ford Pop chassis in mind. The old sit up and beg Ford Pop. You'd throw away the original metal body, probably fall into pieces by the early 1960s and replace it with a sporty little body just like this. This is the Ashley 1172. I used to have one of these with original Ford Pop running gear. I think this has got later running gear on it now, judging by the wheels. Yeah, there were so many of these fiberglass body manufacturers around in the late 50s and the early 1960s special building, as they called it, was quite a popular pastime. Ford Pops were often the basis of them. Some were based on the Austin 7 running gear as well. People, Some enterprising people built their own bodies, but if you weren't quite up to that, you could pick the phone up or pop down to Ashley Laminates and buy a complete shell like this and then spend many, many weeks in the shed fitting it to your chassis and of course you could also pick different engine tuning options as well you could go pick up the aquaplane catalogue and maybe get a set of twin carburetors on a fancy manifold or aluminium cylinder head for your Ford pop engine you could get the Wooler remote gear shift you could get some really nice sets of wheels to go on these as well nice wooden rim steering wheel perhaps though you always look the part on cars like this and the roof does actually lift off so you could lift the whole roof assembly off and fit aero screens if you wanted to but yeah this is one of the better looking of the many ford specials i think that were available in the sort of late 50s early 1960s if you look out copies of practical motorist magazine every issue there would be people sending in photographs of their freshly completed specials and there was a lot of pride in turning out a really nice car and that is where this car originally hails from that world of special building in the late 1950s so this is it's always a treat to see this one that shows like this if you may recognize that filler cap that's off the back of an xj6 modern classic bmw here bmw 5 series the m5 this is the e39 era of bmw m5 and again in that beautiful metallic blue that I really really like and that sounds pretty nice out of those four pipes out the back this is a new one I didn't see this one coming in the Vauxhall VX220 no less looks like the Saab 96 is on manoeuvres this is a really really good car that was I like that carefully negotiating the curves Ooh, look at that the AMG is moving as well the Gullwing Thank you. 
I think we need to have a closer look at this XK150. What a classy looking bit of kit that is. Of course this was the final evolution really of the XK before the E-Type made its debut. There's disc brakes on the front. Occasionally we get a bright red one of these here that's the old Piggery Cafe at Combermere, but yeah, I'm sure we've not seen this one before. It's a bit muddy over here, so we'll watch where we step. Really lovely shape. Very similar in era, of course, to the TR3, parked alongside it. And what's this over here, an MGC GT? Didn't see this one arriving. Must have been down at the other end. So the big three litre straight six, the BMC engine tucked away under that. I think it's an aluminium bonnet, in fact, I think. And what's this badge on the front here? University Motors. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, so a very handsome car, slightly larger diameter wheels compared to the, uh, the sister MGB, the four cylinder MGBs. But this has a six cylinder C series engine, torsion bar front suspension on these. It's a big re engineering job to fit that straight six into the front of the MGC. And they were always a bit criticised back in the day for being a little bit on the nose heavy side. But they make for a great cruiser, these do. Yeah, what a beauty. Looks like the XK150 is heading home now. Well, the little Ashley's heading home. Such a rare little car that is now. Pickup truck movements here, the Dodge Ram, the mighty Dodge Ram. <laughs> Roof down now on the Griffith. Got a groovy little door handle.
MGC. There's another old truck just turned up. Ooh, that looks like a proper barn stroke hedge find. I think we'll have to have a closer look at that one. Proper desert look. Oklahoma 78 plate commercial truck. I think Harley would want that for Ned the Shed. That's a pretty cool pat in a truck. Modern steering column and transmission. Looks like the Porsche 914 is up and running again. So that's good news. Smell of Castrol R. Well, there are quite a few gaps in the car park now, so we will think about leaving ourselves before too long. Just one little job to do go and photograph the V8 pilot with that lovely old green petrol pump from the 1950s. I think we've photographed the standard with it so far. I can't remember what else we've photographed with it. The Dodge, the old Dodge Tour, that one we've photographed with it. But so far, not the pilot. I think this is the first time we've had the pilot here to Combermere actually, so we will grab the opportunity. As long as it doesn't start raining, it's a little bit cloudier than it was before, but I think we'll be all right. And we'll go and get some photos of it alongside that lovely old petrol pump. Dad's getting ready to go now. Goes the old bay window camper. Well, there we go, back home safe and sound once again in the old V8 Pilot, another successful test run out. 
So, anyway, thank you very much for watching the channel. Please have a look around if you like these sort of car show visits, museum visits, because there are stacks and stacks of them on here now. So thanks very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of thing really helps the channel continue to grow. And there'll be many, many more videos along very, very soon. So, bye for now.